Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I have such a fun treat for you. Today is actually National Fragrance Day, so there is a lot of really awesome deals going on in the perfume space today, tomorrow, and we're talking Bath & Body Works. So Bath & Body Works has been going crazy with the new releases. We just had the first launch of the sneak peek of the Bridgerton collection last week. We have another Bridgerton collection coming up on Monday, and in store today, I was able to find the new, I think it's called the Beveled Collection, which is 10 new fragrance mists. Plus, I did pick up a few more exciting new spring launches, but today we're just going to go over these because there is a lot to talk about. I personally believe all of these to be inspired by certain popular high-end perfumes, so we're going to cover what I think they're kind of duping what the inspiration was and just talk about these scents. But first, I wanted to mention, if you're watching this video in real time, Bath & Byorks has a fragrance mist sale today and tomorrow, and it's a really good deal. So they're actually running $4.95 online. Now there's definitely something weird going on because my store was doing $5.95 on the sale. I don't know if it's because I bought pretty much all the new launches or what the deal was with that, but it seems to be that my store had a different price point. So let me know if that was true for you guys as well, but that's just what I found in my store, but online it says $4.95 and they do not have online the scents I'm going to be talking about today, but apparently they're coming out on Monday, but I'm honestly not sure if all locations are going to be carrying this. I'm in Iowa and somehow we still got this, so I feel like a lot of them will be getting it, but just not putting it out until Monday, which I think a lot is supposed to be dropping on Monday too. So I'll probably do another video on Monday with the new Bridgerton stuff, if there's a good sale, and some of the other spring fragrances too. But let's go ahead and talk about this new beveled collection because there is 10 new fragrance mists in this line which is so many and the weird thing is these are only coming in fragrance mist they are not coming in any other form there's no shower gels there's no body creams and that's also kind of why I think they're more dupes because they're kind of focusing on the actual fragrance mist, which these are dupes for popular perfume. So I guess that makes sense in a way, but I'm curious to see like how well this collection does and maybe if it does really well for them, they'll keep this up. Maybe they will add some different body creams, lotions, and all that later. But I personally don't mind that it's only in fragrance mist because I find that to be what I buy the most when it comes to Bath & Body Works because honestly, it's fun to layer different lotions with the scents and sometimes you're going for a different vibe but sometimes I don't know what I want for that day so I'll just use the unscented lotion and then put my body mist maybe layer a perfume with it so these are great for layering but I do find them to be really close to some high-end perfumes which seems to be such the trend right now you guys know I just talked about like the new finery dupes as well a lot of people just don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on a perfume these days so I just find that a lot of brands are making different dupes or inspired by perfumes. These might not be 100% spot on dupes, but I definitely see where some inspiration comes from. So let's go over these new scents. The first two I wanna talk about here, I feel like these are the ones that people are most intrigued about, especially if you're a follower of mine. You know we love gourmands on this channel. We love vanillas. So we're gonna talk about, let's do the Viva Vanilla first. This was the first one that I smelled in store and immediately I'm like, this definitely reminds me of something. The notes on this one are rich plum, glowing amber, and addictive vanilla. And honestly, what this really reminds me of, which I don't know if this is technically what they were going for, but what it reminds me of is actually the new Sniff Vanilla Vice perfume. Now, I mean, maybe this is what they were going for, I don't know, but these definitely have similar qualities. I know this one had sold out for a bit as well, and it was pretty trending, but this these just really do remind me of each other, although I don't know if the Sniff has a plum note. I have to look that up. So the Sniff does have amber and vanilla in the notes, as well as musk, sugar, ice cream, and jasmine. It does not have a plum note, but honestly, these two smell almost identical to me on the dry down. They're both really almost like burnt sugar type of vanillas. It has a little airy vibe to it where it kind of reminds me of a yummy vanilla mixed with a little bit of Baccarat DNA to give it that like airy cloud-like effect. And it has like a slightly woody undertone as well, but 
it smells so good. I've been loving Vanilla Vice and that's what this really reminded me of off the bat. Side note, I wanted to add, this also smells like Ariana Grande's Mod Vanilla, which also has a plum note. And this one smells similar to the Sniff Vanilla Vice. So I think that kind of makes sense where I thought the similarities are. But yeah, it totally reminds me of this type of scent as well. If you guys are familiar with Mod Vanilla, these notes are very similar. Now, something kind of interesting is like Sol de Janeiro Chirosa 40. This has notes of black, amber, plum, and vanilla woods, which is actually really similar to the notes on here. Although I think these two, they do smell a little different to me. I get more of the plum in this Sol de Janeiro. Um, but I also think this could be similar to like the Seven Virtues vanilla woods i believe it's called because i know that one had kind of a woodsy vanilla vibe so i think those could definitely also be inspirations for this new viva vanilla but if you're kind of wondering what it smells like to me it's very similar to the sniff vanilla vice and i will tell you this lasts this one lasts i will not say all of them do i did not completely test them all for longevity because i just got these today but this one it's amazing. I can still smell it on me from when I first sprayed it earlier today in store and it has really nice longevity. So overall, this vanilla is such a winner for me. I love it. It does not really smell like any of the other vanillas Bath & Body Works has done. I would say maybe it's closest to the cozy vanilla bourbon, but I still think they're completely different scents. That's just my opinion though, but I personally think it's something new and exciting and it's seriously a 10 out of 10 for me. The price on these are $18.95, so unfortunately rewards do not work on them. But yes, love, love, love the Bath & Body Works Viva Vanilla, and to me it's similar to the Sniff Vanilla Vice. Let me know if you guys have smelled these and if you agree. Also let me know your opinions down below because we might have totally different tastes, totally different opinions, and I love hearing what you guys think too. The next one we have is the O Cherry. I was so surprised they were doing another cherry fragrance so soon after Sweetheart Cherry. And and for some reason, I feel like my store had the most of this one, so I don't know if they really were expecting this to be such a top hit. The notes on this one are Black Cherry, Sheer Magnolia, and Tonka Bean. So of course, the most iconic cherry perfume that is always duped is Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. I would say that's definitely what this is most similar to, but it's, it's not quite there for me. It's not quite as yummy as the Tom Ford. I think this one's definitely missing that almond note that Tom Ford has. To be honest, I prefer the Sweetheart Cherry. I think that one smells even yummier. This one's more like a pure cherry with a hint of floral in the background. And it's not quite as sweet as the Sweetheart Cherry from earlier, so that may be more up your alley if you're looking for more of a perfume type of scent. You don't really like the Gourmands. I think this one is nice. It's not really sickly to me. It doesn't smell like medicine in my opinion, but I love cherry scents and I don't know, it's hard to go wrong for me with a good cherry. I personally do not own the original Tom Ford. I used to back in the day, but I just felt like it was so overpriced and I ended up selling it and just sticking with the dupes. So I only have the dupes for it, which as far as the finery, not another cherry goes, this one's definitely more similar. So I wouldn't say this is a dupe, but I think it's definitely inspired by, and I would maybe go for the finery one instead, but this is still a nice, less gourmand type of cherry. And I can't wait to try it a little bit more. I don't feel like this one is the most long lasting though. I feel like this one is still pretty light on the skin. Next in the collection, we have Lost in Santal. And I feel like this is a pretty obvious one that's probably gonna be inspired by Santal 33 from Lalabo. I feel like that one often gets duped. So the notes here are warm cardamom, satin, sandalwood, and cedarwood. So let's go ahead and spray. I do have a mini size of the Lalabo. I guess I was using these wrong all along. You're supposed to hold it down here and then have this part be the one that is sprayed. I don't know, but I guess it doesn't really matter what you choose to do. I just saw that on TikTok the other day. But yeah, this is a very woody type of fragrance, very unisex, but so many people love the Lalabo version. Let's try it next to the Lalabo. These 
definitely seem identical to me on paper so I definitely think that the inspiration for Lost in Santel was definitely Santel 33 and I feel like based on this woody fragrance background I feel like this would be a pretty strong one because I feel like woody scents tend to stick around on the skin a little bit longer. Okay next one I knew the dupe of this as soon as I smelled it it just immediately clicked in my mind. This is called Pink Obsessed and this has notes of blushing jasmine, cashmere praline, and vanilla bourbon and this is one of the closest dupes that I have to the Valentino Donna Born in Roma, which I'm surprised they didn't go for more of this type of pink bottle because this looks like their uh, pink pee pee version <laughs> from last year. This does not smell like that one. Definitely it's a Born in Roma dupe. Um, I think that Finery tried to do Born in Roma too, but I think this one just does a much better job of it. It smells so similar. I really thought that this one lasted quite long on the skin as well. If you're not familiar with Born in Roma, it's so good. It's one of just my favorite go-tos for every day. I feel like it's a non-offensive scent most people enjoy. It's a fruity, fresh, sweet type of perfume perfect for spring and summer such a compliment getter so this is definitely one I think worth picking up I'm so excited to have a really close dupe to Valentino because yeah I feel like no one's been able to really dupe this one that I've tried personally and this one really nails it right on the head so really love this pink obsessed highly recommend it if you're looking for just a nice everyday yummy fresh fruity fragrance mist it is so, so good. The next one I have here, this is called Getaway Soiree. This definitely smells familiar. It smells like a very solar kind of sunscreen beachy scent. I feel like the perfume that gets duped the most with this type of scent profile is Tom Ford Soleil Blanc. So possibly that's what they're going for here, but I'm not quite sure because I do not own that one. This one has notes of sun-kissed mandarin tuberose and solar musk. So let me know if that sounds familiar to you, but to me, this is kind of a brighter beachy sunscreen scent. It's more fruity than the typical sunscreen scent, but you can definitely smell those solar notes in here. And for some reason, I feel like the Tom Ford isn't quite as fruity as this one. I don't remember if Tom Ford had like a mandarin note. Let me actually look this up because I'm actually very curious. It looks like Tom Ford's has notes of pistachio, bergamot, which I guess would give it that citrusy vibe, cardamom, pink pepper, middle notes of tuberose, ylang ylang, and jasmine, base notes of coconut, amber, tonka bean, and benzoin. So obviously it has like a lot more notes going on, but I think that one leans more coconutty. So maybe that's not what this is. It honestly just smells like sunshine and SPF. <laughs> Let me know if that rings a bell to you. If you can think of any sunscreen-like scents that have a mandarin citrus note, but that was just kind of my first thought. I just really don't own a lot of these type of solar scents. I have um, the Alien Goddess, but I think that one doesn't really remind me of this at all. Yeah, I don't know. Let me know if you guys have any ideas with this one. Okay, next scent we have here is called Floral Fantasy. And this one has notes of peach, osmanthus, jasmine, and warm patchouli. And I feel like these scents with a strong patchouli note always remind me of YSL's Mon Paris. So I kind of feel like it's going for this vibe. Now there's probably other scents that do also smell like this scent profile, but I honestly think... This seems very spot on to the YSL in my opinion. On paper, these are definitely very, very close. The YSL might just be a little bit stronger and it seems like it's a hint sweeter, just a little more bright from the YSL Mon Paris, but I don't know, they give me a very similar vibe. So I really think that this is the inspiration, but if you guys wanna know kind of what to expect from Floral Fantasy, if you guys know, Patchouli is kind of a deeper scent. It's it's very hit or miss with people, but to me it's not really like a super heavy grandma floral, if that makes sense. Like it's not super white floral. I don't know. Something about this is sweet. I've always liked this kind of a scent and I think it's really pretty, but I definitely think it won't be everyone's cup of tea. Now another floral one that I honestly could not figure out what the heck this is replicating, but this is really nice as well. This is called Petal Parade, and this one has notes of neroli petals, orange flower, and white woods. And to me, 
This one's another really fruity floral, so it's a little sweeter. The Floral Fantasy, I could see this being a little bit deeper and heavier on the skin. This one, it seems a little more happy and bright with that neroli in there. It really brightens it up. But yeah, I cannot for the life of me think of what this could be a dupe of. So you guys will have to let me know what you think in the comments based on those notes. But yeah, I think this is very pretty as well. These all really do smell very high end. So if you're not really a body mist girly, I know a lot of people like to bash on Bath & Body Works. But fragrance mists are running the show right now. And some of the top sellers at Sephora are fragrance mists. Like Sol de Janeiro stays a top seller for them. You'll notice high-end perfume brands are coming out with fragrance mists like Fleur and Ellis Brooklyn. Because sometimes it's nice just to have a little something and like have something you can layer with other things. And you can make the scents last. Like depending on what base you're using, what lotions you're using, a body oil and all that. So... I've always been a fragrance mist fan, plus they're a lot cheaper too. So I don't like when people like bash on Bath & Body Works like it's not good enough or like it's less than, you know? But yeah, I cannot, I cannot think of what this is. It does smell a little familiar, but it is a really nice fruity floral perfume. The next one in the line, this one is If You Musk. And this has very, very similar notes to a popular discontinued Bath & Body Works scent called Kaleidoscope. So when I looked up Kaleidoscope here, it says that it has notes of iris cedarwood and pink pepper and this new if you musk has notes of iris pink pepper and airy musk so it doesn't have the cedarwood but it has the airy musk note but i have never owned kaleidoscope so i cannot tell you if it is a dupe or not let me know in the comments if you know if you've smelled both of them and then we can kind of figure it out because i'm very curious but Kaleidoscope has always been said to be a dupe of Glossier's U perfume, which is like a true musk scent, and it kind of smells different on everyone. I love a good clean musk scent, and this is beautiful, and I definitely could see that it might be inspired by the Glossier. Yeah, it does. It does smell like that. It has that kind of musky woodiness that the Glossier has, so I think, honestly, this could be the same thing as Kaleidoscope because I'm getting some type of woody note in here for sure but it is really nice if you guys like more of a clean unisex slightly musk a little woody type of scent and this is beautiful it's like your skin but better and i i would say it is comparable to the glossier u for sure next scent this is another one i could not figure out this is on the horizon and this one again seems more of a aquatic scent. I'm not great with aquatic perfumes because I just don't own a whole lot of them. It's not really one that I buy a lot, but this has notes of watery bergamot, blue lotus, and driftwood moss. It's definitely unisex. I'm getting kind of like a herbal, fresh aquatic, almost cologne-like fragrance out of this one. It's probably not one that I think I would really wear a whole lot, but I'm definitely getting a citrus note in here from that bergamot and like a fresh oceanside type of scent with this. All right, last but not least, we have Covered in Roses, another pretty pink bottle. This one has notes of ruby berries, sugared rose buds, and blush amber. And immediately, this one completely reminds me of Delina. So I really think they were going for Delina. I mean, Delina is kind of iconic, and I feel like they did a good job with it. I only own the Delina exclusive, which is a slightly sweeter version of Delina. Delina is definitely more of that sweet rose. You definitely get a lot of that rose note, so you have to be a fan of rose, but I don't mind rose when it has sweetness to it. I still prefer like the exclusive version because I feel like this one's even sweeter and it reminds me of like rose and vanilla. Um, and this one just has like a slight sweetness to it. It is such a beautiful scent, and I think they, they really did such a good job replicating in Delina. So that is my thoughts on this new Beveled collection and what I think some of the dupes are. Of course, these might not be 100%. That is just kind of my opinions and thoughts, and hopefully this was helpful if you were thinking about picking any of these up. I'm so sorry if you cannot get these today because, I mean, if you can, snag them because it's such a great price. But definitely stay tuned for Monday to see if it is coming to other stores, and maybe it'll be on 
online too. I'm not honestly sure if it is coming online or not. But again, I do plan to do a video probably Monday, maybe Tuesday, depending, going over the new Bridgerton line. And also, I have more new fragrance mist to talk about, including the new Bourbon Strawberry. I have the new Apple, the new Lavender, and Dressed in White. So I will talk about those later. I just kind of wanted to split this video up so it wasn't too much at once. I really wanted to focus on this new beveled collection because I'm really excited about it. You guys know I love a good perfume dupe and especially when my favorite brand Bath & Body Works is doing it. I mean we know Bath & Body Works has done scents before that smell like high-end perfumes but I think they definitely made it more obvious with this whole line. Let me know your thoughts down below if you've tried anything. Let me know if you figured out some of the other dupes that I couldn't and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys. Thank you.